Are other YouTubers trying to convince you you need these expensive, overpriced, loose tenon makers? That's why you need to get Paul's Tool Nopeno version 2. It's free because I don't value your time. Are you still using a drill and dowels for your form of joinery? Why not use a loose tenon? They're much cooler. Stop being a loser and use loose tenons. They're, they're better. Build this jig. It's free. Pocket holes, do you know what they're good for? If you answered absolutely nothing, you're right. You should build one of these. It's a Paul's at all, no per no version 2. It's really good at making mortises for loose tenons and does actual joinery instead of this crap. Make one. It's free. All right, with all that silliness out of the way, what is a no per no and why would you want one? Clearly this is an open eye because it's got the sticker on the side that says so. This is a very inexpensive, easy to make jig for primarily cutting mortises in workpieces such as this, primarily again for the use of loose tenons. So Festool Dominoes are one example of loose tenons. This top plate here is where most of the action happens. First off you can adjust it back and forth to get the exact position on your workpiece to adjust your workpiece this way you adjust the stops. These templates are replaceable. You can make them out of MDF, plywood, whatever. You can 3D print them. You can 3D print different shapes. So it doesn't just have to be used for joinery. Or you can cut them out of acrylic. This was all cut with a router, not with a sand C or laser, just by hand. So you can certainly make it out of lots of different materials. Still get a really good result. The top plate slides back and forth on these T-tracks, which are pretty inexpensive. You only need a small amount for this jig and it gives a way to lock everything down using these knobs, as well as accurately sliding back and forth. The top carriage is made up of six pieces, three of six millimeter plywood and three of three millimeter MDF. These pieces will overlap on glue up, refer to the plans for the exact dimensions. The general idea behind Nopino version two is to make it easier to build. If you have access to a laser or CNC, you could make this out of a single piece. The two outer pieces create a rabbit when the MDF is glued to the plywood. The inner piece has a smaller plywood piece with the MDF overlapping the two outside pieces. While the top plate dries, the base can be made. I'm using form ply, which is a plywood coated with a phenolic resin layer, typically used for concrete forms. Any plywood will do, this just looks pretty. Using either a dado stack or a router bit, the topmost piece of the base receives two dado to fit T-track which will act as a linear slide. Without moving the fence, the top carriage also gets these dados so everything is aligned. Dado is made in multiple passes to get an exact fit to the T-track, rather than trying to exactly nail the width of the stack. The top of the base is then flipped and has a rabbit cut to help with alignment of the rest of the base. This is a very shallow dado, only a few millimetre deep. The top of the base was longer than it had to be, but we'll be saving this part for a special part later. Construction of the base is very straightforward. A pilot hole with countersink is drilled, then it's just screwed together. No glue required. The short length of T-track just drops into the dado. It's secured with tiny 4 gauge screws. The very base of the base is also screwed on. A clamp helps stop everything from shifting. The base base is larger so there is room to clamp it to the workbench more easily. Mm -hmm. 
I'm using 5 sixteenths of an inch T-Track hardware, so I'm drilling an 8mm hole that matches the bolt size. Unfortunately metric T-Track isn't available so I have to think in both units. This will be for the locking knobs. A smaller 4mm pilot hole is drilled for tapping later. The plywood is tapped with a M5 metal tap. This works okay in plywood, though it did work great in acrylic. There are short threaded inserts called heat set inserts that could be glued, but I don't have any on hand. The threads allow easy swapping of templates. You can see how the T-Track allows the whole top carriage to slide back and forth to adjust the template. Additional bracing is added to the front. The clamping table will attach here too. The threaded inserts I use have a flange. To make them sit flush, first I use a force nerve bit to make a counter bore, then a through hole for the inserts. The table needs to have wider counter bore holes for the bolt heads in the matching pattern to the base. And yes, I've skewed one by mistake, but that's okay. Once counterboard, the holes can be drilled through with a smaller bit. I'm using M6 hardware, so to give a bit of wiggle room, the through holes are 8mm wide. Relief dados are cut at the table saw, but again these could be cut at the router table. These will put less pressure on the dovetail bit and create a cleaner slot. I've chosen to go with a grid of dovetail slots for match fit clamps, but you could easily use T-Track instead. I'm using Microjig's official match fit router bit, but any 14 degree dovetail bit will work with their clamps. This one has slight roundovers on the shoulders which is a little nicer. The table simply bolts onto the threaded inserts. By being replaceable, you could have very specific tables as needed. Here is an example from the mocks and vice kits I'm working on. This table has a V groove in it to hold round stock, and rather than using match fit clamps, it uses a toggle clamp. This is a very weirdly specific jig to create a slot for a screwdriver for wooden grub screws, but that is another of the goals of Nopino version 2, to make it more useful for more tasks. It's great to have a flexible table, but it's rare you'd ever make just a single mortise. It is usually multiple pieces with dados in the same spot, so to take the guesswork out of that I need some stops. Using my small parts routing jig version 2, I can easily and safely route a through groove for a bolt. To make the stop even more useful, it will have an L shape to it. To make that nice and square, a partial cut is made at the table saw, then it is cut to length. The final L shape is cut at the band saw. But wait, there's more? If you've ever used a biscuit jointer or a domino on plywood, you'll know that getting it in the middle of the board can be a little bit tricky because how do you keep everything square? You usually have to clamp across it. Then if you've got a few to do, it can be a real pain in the backside to do. And that's where Nopano comes in to save the day. Inspired by router edge guides, Nopano has this thing. Because the top plate is removable, we can adjust this back and forth, stick it on some just excess T-track, make a little fence do hickey, and you can get all of those mortises parallel Wherever you like on a board, you just need long enough T-Track. The saved offcut from the top plate is cut in half for the edge guide. Because this was an offcut, we know the dados in this lineup perfectly. Through holes are drilled for locking bolts. The two pieces can just be screwed together. If you aren't using form ply, you can glue the pieces if you like. Unfortunately, this did make it so a bolt could never actually be inserted. So it was back to the table saw to cut off the extra bits. Then the T-Track just slots into the edge guide and the top carriage can slot into the T-Track. Let's talk about templates for a moment. I've got three templates here and you can see the different sizes for different size mortises. 
and for use on different size guide bushings and router bits. The guide bushing, router bit and template all pair together so that you get the same size every time. If you've not seen guide bushings before, they attach to the underside of your router. Instead of using a bearing on the router bit, you can use any straight router bit. And the guide bushing itself will follow the template. You can see this one is a 387 inch or 9.5 millimeter outer diameter, matches up with this template perfectly. And it's gonna give you a very straight single pass width. When you use a quarter of an inch router bit to make a quarter of an inch mortise, it's trapped in there so you can't really mess it up. For this template here, it uses a larger guide bushing, but it still has enough room to wiggle back and forth so that I can get a wider mortise than what my router bit is. So in this case, this pairs with a 3 8 of an inch or 9.5 millimeter router bit and a half inch guide bushing or 12.7 millimeter to create a 10 millimeter slot for the 10 millimeter domino. They can really be made from whatever you like. You just need to make sure that they fit in this rebate that was created when we did the glue up. So in this case, I've got a little ledge here. The acrylic is the same thickness. The MDF is the same thickness, but you could use thicker material and just create a rebate at the router table or table saw. Why is this opening here so large? Well, it allows you to use different types of templates as well as rotating them 90 degrees if you happen to make it the full size with the full rebate and all of that. You could add a few more screw holes there and that would allow you, particularly with the edge guide, to change the angle of your mortise to suit the workpiece. Templates for noping no can be made from any material that matches the thickness of the upper layer of the top carriage. You just need a slot that matches the mortise you want to make. For example, if you want a 10mm wide mortise but are using a 9.5mm router bit, you would likely be using a 13mm guide bushing. Take the difference between the bit and the target mortise, then add that to the guide bushing size to get the size template you will need. That is, a 13.5mm slot in your template will give a perfect 10mm mortise with that pairing of bit and bushing. Time for a complete demo. First the workpiece is loaded into the jig using the stops to position it. A match fit clamp holds it in position. Using a 3 8 of an inch router bit and a half inch guide bushing, the router is placed on top of the noping O and plunging can begin. I'm taking it down about 5mm deep per pass. You can see the 10mm domino is a pretty snug fit already. Multiple passes will be needed in most cases to get to the final depth, but because it's guided by a template, it is easy to wiggle it back and forth. That's what I call a good fitting mortise. And that's Nopano. And how to build Nopano and how to use Nopano. I would recommend these Powertech brass bushings uh, simply because they've got the smallest stem that I've found out of all the bushings that I've been able to find. And those large stems can get in the way of using thin template material. So you're sort of limited by how far the router can plunge down means that some of the smaller bits for very particular applications you can't use. Uh, I'll have a link to them and the free plans for Nopano version 2 in the description below. Now you don't need the 3D printed hardware at all. I just happen to like the colour and these knobs are nice but I'll have links to all of that as well. You can buy those bits and pieces uh, from whatever vendor of T-Track. They'll have bolts and nuts and all of that. So 
You don't have to worry about having a 3D printer. It is not a requirement for this at all. For the loose tenon stock, you can make your own domino stock, loose tenon stock. You can make it to the size of your router bit, which is what I'd actually recommend. So if you're using a 3 8 inch router bit, make a 3 8 inch thick floating tenon rather than making a 10 millimeter one. You can use dominoes, Fez tools, dominoes, the loose tenon stock, if you make funky templates and all of that. I've covered that more in the original Nopano video, so I'll link to that as well, so that if you want to do that, you can, but I'd probably just make my own stock because it's a lot less fiddling around getting the template just right. I have a couple of neat projects that is using this that are not just straight mortises. So if you've got any cool uses for something like this, I'd love to see that. Hopefully this gets people off doing the wrong joinery and using real joinery for joint joinery. Thanks for watching.